Hey there, and in this tutorial, we're going to be creating a map which our players are going to be spawned in and also have some spawn points so that they don't just get randomly instant in the scene. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the map. So we're going to hit new scene and basically this map is going to be a node 2D and we're just going to name it map. We're going to save it in the scenes folder as map.tsl. Next thing is we're going to create a color rect and we're going to change the rect size to the size of our screen which is 124 by 600. Then we'll change the color to any color of my choice. I'm just going to pick something random here. And the next thing is the tile map. So we're going to create a node called tile map. So in this tutorial, I'm not going to be teaching how to make tile maps. So if you want to learn, you can go over to my other video. Link will be in the description and at the card that they write here, where you learn how to make auto tiles. For this tutorial, I'm not going to be teaching that. So to actually make the tile sheet, I'm going to click tile set here, and I'm going to add tiles complete .png. So I'm going to add a new auto tile, and I'm going to select this region. Then from here, I'm just going to actually speed up through this because um, there is no point going through all this. So for your information, this is actually a 64 by 64 bit style sheet, I guess. So um, that's the settings over here, step, x and y, subtitle size, x and y, 64, 64, just so that you won't get confused. So from here, I'm going to speed up everything, so I'll see you at the end. So I'm done with the bit masking and I just want to tell you a simple hack that I use most of the time when I'm working with style sheets and that is when I'm selecting the bit mask I don't just select the color of the walls and all so as you can see I selected the empty spaces here and that's what I just do most of the time for everything just to save time so basically that's just a simple hack you can go away with So now I'm basically done with everything and if you notice I did actually select these tiles. If you're following exactly what I'm doing in this tutorial, don't select these tiles because they do actually treat our style sheets nicer and right all. So basically just ignore these um, 7 tiles here. So with all that done, we can go over to the tile map and start placing our tiles. So now we're actually ready to start placing tiles all around our map. So I'm just going to place in the most obvious places, which is like this. So that we can just have a bounding box there and I'm just going to place some very random Hopefully I think that will be good. So I'm going to have a spawn point here, spawn point here, here and here So that's basically all we need to do in the map So if we save that we go over to the script and over to server.gd When we connect to the server After we had the lobby we connect to the server then we want to We want to basically instance the map there so before we do that, we have to preload it. So up here, we're going to make a variable called map and it's going to preload map.tsn basically. Down here, we're going to instance the map with map.instance and set the name to map. The next thing is we want to actually instance this map under a particular node. So now we want to instance this map above our nodes variable here. Um, the reason for that is because if you don't, you see the map over the players and all that, then, which is not what we want. We actually want the players to be over the map. So to actually check where that is, if we run the scene now, so if we go over to the remote, we see that the global is the one that is above the nodes. So we want to put it, um, put the map somewhere between this. So to do that, we're going to do get underscore tree dot root dot add child below node. So remember, um, we want to add it below the global. So we say global and we can know that we're going to add, which is the C. Basically, this is actually all we need to do to instance the map. So if we save this, we run this and also run our server. If we join game, you see that we have our player inside here and the map is all around and we can interact with it and collide. So for the next part of this tutorial, where we're going to be doing the spawn points, um, actually, I classify this as not being that much efficient, but just for the sake of time purposes in this tutorial, we're going to be using it. So we're going to um, actually find points on this map. Um, for example, if we want this point to be a spawn point, we're going to drag over the ruler from the edge here. Down here, we're going to see like 288 by 144. And over here, if we want it to be a point, we make it 8 for 848 by 124 and all that just find points here and probably write them down or something 
well actually i already have points preloaded so that i won't have to be coming back and going back and forth to check please remember the one up is the x-axis um, and the one on the other side um, on the right on the left hand side is the y-axis so if we go to our server right now so up here we're going to make a variable called spawn point and as i said this is going to be um our vector tools which are the positions and the at the spot at the spot you want to um, make spawn points so basically i've had coded all this in and that's what you need to do next thing is we'll make a variable called spawn points clone and it's going to be equal to spawn points actually and you see why we did this in a minute then we want to make another variable taking points and it's going to be equal to an empty array and over here just um after the player connected function we're going to make a function called choose spawn location so now here, here we're going to just choose a random integer just to represent the index of the points we're choosing and when we choose um a particular point then we're going to make a variable location and it's going to be equal to spawn points in square brackets that point so basically so basically gets the point that we chose and then basically we're going to um append that particular location to the taking points and we're going to remove that point from spawn point basically it's just going to choose one of it remove it put it inside taking points so that um, points will actually be acted like it's already taken then after removing the points we're going to check the size of spawn points and if it's less than or equal to zero i don't know how it's going to be less than but just for security purposes so if it's less than or equal to zero then we're going to reset spawn points to spawn points clone that's why we made spawn points clone here and and taking points dot clear is just going to empty the taking points so that we can start the whole process over again and lastly we're going to return the location that we chose basically this is all we need to do then go over to player connected instead of passing in a hard coded value here we can just set choose spawn location and it's just going to choose a random location and make sure people are not spawned there um, twice in a row making it kind of rotate the spawn points and all that so with all that being done i think we're ready but before i proceed i'm just going to go over to the clients here and go over to projects project settings go over to display window and down here we're going to set stretch mode to 2d and aspect to keep the reason for that is so that when we when we run the scene here um when we resize it it just kind of resizes it to the scale here so i run this so if i run this here go over run the server and go over to another good instance i run it i'm just going to resize this a bit so if i join game on this side you see i actually i didn't just um i didn't spawn at this point i spawned here because that's a spawn location if i join game here you see that another guy got spawned at another location and i'm just going to run more instances so since there are four locations it will have to exhaust all the four locations before it starts respawning again so as you can see you got instance at this point if we join another game it's going to get instance at the last point and just for trial purposes hopefully my laptop doesn't crash <laughs> We're going to join the last and it's, you see that it's going to throw us an error so as you can see division by zero error um the thing is spawn point flow equals to spawn points instead we're meant to do spawn points dot duplicate so we have to try this whole process again but i'm going to speed through it so just like before i have five good instances so i'm going to join game here join game here join game here here and here as you can see he actually shifted one guy um so that he can instance itself again that's actually the cycle i guess if it finishes the spawn points it's just going to start again from the beginning and these spawn points are actually random so it usually goes in that manner but that's not actually how it is it's going to be completely random most of the time yeah the game is looking quite empty so the next tutorial we're going to be working on the shooting of the players and the dying and all that stuff so if you like this smash like thanks for watching see you guys next time smash subscribe and goodbye